Hey, everybody, it's Bunny Pounds with Christians Engage with another conversation here in our second season of our our podcast. Man, this year is just flying by already. We spent a month talking about prayer. Now we're in the month of talking about voting and civic engagement. And uh, all of our friends in Texas, we're in Texas primary season. This week begins early voting of the Texas primary. And so we're super excited Um, We're launching a new partnership with our friends at Patriot Academy, and I am honored to have our friend Rick Green with us today. Rick, if you don't know Rick, he is a former Texas state legislator. Um, I know his father also. His father is a great man of God, a political activist, longtime political activist. Um, Rick is an author. He is the executive producer of Constitution Alive which is America's most engaging and entertaining study of the U.S. Constitution. It's a great program. I've got the DVDs at my house. He also co-hosts uh, Wall Builders Live with David Barton every day. I guess that's a daily radio program. And Rick and Kara have four kids, uh, two grandkids, I guess. Do you have any more, Rick? Not yet, but I'll take all I can get. <laughs> I'm sure it's a whole <laughs> different experience having grandkids, right? It's the best job on the planet. Nothing compares. No I can't doubt. wait. I can't wait. My boys are 25 and 23, and I keep going, come on, guys. let us They're both married. Let's have some children here. Yeah, man. Um, but the Green family, if you guys have not seen their interactive videos, uh, the Green family has been teaching us about the founding fathers, our founding documents, our first principles. Um, nobody teaches the Constitution better than David Barton and Rick Green. I don't even want to even try. So we're going to just partner with Patriot Academy and get their biblical citizenship out to people. And we're excited to have you. I love it. Love it. Love teaming up with you, Bunny. So excited about what you're doing and the people you're reaching and just equipping people. You know, it's uh, it, there's so many organizations that it's kind of fly, you know, they fly over and they inspire you for a day, but they don't equip you. And uh, I just think we both have such a similar desire to give people action items and 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 help them get engaged and, and do their civic duty. So I love working with you. Thanks for a little time today. Oh, it's great. Well, so the big question we always get, and I'll, I'll hit this real fast. Our big question we always get is, what do I do to help America, right? We hear yeah. that all the time. I know you guys do. What do I do? I feel a burden right now. I want to throw things at the TV, right? Well, you start with pray. Start with prayer for our elected officials, our city, state, and nation, voting in every election, and then engaging in practical, political, or civic engagement education. Um, Take our pledge to pray, vote, and engage. We will help you start remembering to pray every week, voting in every election, and engaging. So on the engaging side... Um, we are launching a couple classes, Rick. One of them is with our friend Ben Quine. I think you know the Quine family, Cornerstone Curriculum. But Ben is uh, teaching a class. We're going to start Monday, this coming Monday, guys, on racism. And then we're going to do biblical justice, economics, and biblical worldview with Ben for the course of this year. But on Tuesday nights, every quarter, we're going to start a biblical citizenship class. And we've already got a whole bunch of people signed up for this new one with our vice president, Um, Scott Jones and Patty Jones are going to be facilitating this. Tell us first about Patriot Academy, and then let's go through how this class was developed and why this is important for people. Can you give us the, what is Patriot Academy, just for people that don't know? You bet. If I could, just quick response to to Pray, Vote, Engage, because, you know, it's not just a a catchy, you know, um, theme that you've got there. Those are biblical commands. I mean, that, that's not a do this if you feel good. We're supposed to pray for our leaders. That's a biblical command. Yes. Uh, we've been given the talent of freedom. So if we bury it, we're the wicked and slothful servants. So we're disobeying the command to actually engage in these things. And if we're not engaging in the culture, we're not being good stewards of of what we've been given. So I just, man, I want to reiterate that that what you're training people to do is not it's not just, you know, a nice suggestion. It's like, hey, this is what God called us to do and to not do these things. Uh, is to be derelict in our in our in our duty. So I, I love it. Um, yeah, Patriot Academy. We started about 22 years ago. While I was a legislator, Kara and I just got really frustrated with the political class and the political world. Uh, I guess I went in a little bit naive, maybe thinking, you know, 
um, hey, we're going to go in. We're going to debate all the great ideas of the day, and and uh, you know the best principles will win. Uh, boy, was I naive and uh, didn't <laughs> realize that you know not only are there people that that support principles of tyranny instead of principles of liberty, but a lot of the people that wear the badge of Republican or conservative or whatever aren't grounded in principle. They don't know. Um, you know, what are the principles that produce good results like uh, religious liberty and prosperity and all of these things? And they literally are there for the shrimp and the caviar, finger to the wind, whatever's popular at the time, that's what they go for. And that just really frustrated me. Uh, I was surprised 20 years ago that, that, that when I was seeing Marxism being, you know, literally infiltrating our school system and, and I passed my bill to stop, you know, to, to, to literally require the teaching of the Declaration and the Constitution because schools weren't doing it. Um, I was mocked, man. I mean, Republicans mocked me. They made fun of me. They acted like I was just waving the flag, being Pollyanna, and they didn't want to take on um, this behemoth of uh, of indoctrination that was happening in our public school system. And and so that was a big wake up call for me. And then also we were at that time, Kara was pushing a stroller around the Capitol, going from office to office, working on one of my bills that was uh, to give vaccine choice, to, to not require um, you to prove that your religion had it in the tenets of their faith, which this whole New York thing, that's exactly what that battle is about. Yep. Um, so we kind of cut our teeth on the very issues that right now are hot. We cut our teeth on that 20 years ago and realized, you know what, all of these things, whether it's Marxist infiltration in the education system, the whole vaccine thing, the the the, the suing of, of, of gun manufacturers to blame them for crime, all the things we dealt with were symptoms. They were not the problem. They were symptoms of the problem. The problem underneath was civic and biblical ignorance because we don't know the truth. We aren't able to measure the issues of the day against that plumb line, and therefore we can't find the right answers, and we fall for all this fluffy stuff that, that politicians tend to do. And so we started Patriot Academy to teach truth. Initially with, with young people, we, we wanted to raise up a new generation that gets it, that's passionate. So we started doing these capital boot camps with 16 to 25 year olds, we'd take over the Capitol. They would sit in the real chairs, debate the issues of the day for a week, um, go into committee late into the night. It was just like a real legislative session. And yet at the same time, we were pounding in biblical worldview, pounding in founding fathers philosophy. And those kids would get out and they would take that conviction into whatever field they went into, whether they went to be a musician or a, a, a preacher or a, an educator, or actually went into the political world. Now we've got 3,500 grads out there, and a lot of them are serving in the legislature or serving in Congress or you know, running different things, um, but they're involved in every area of the culture. And then a few years ago, we decided, you know what, it's not just the kids that need this, we need this. Right. I, I didn't realize how ignorant I was, even as a lawyer and you know, a former legislator and all that, about these basic um, you know, ideas in the Constitution and where they came from and how the Bible influenced those things. So David Barton really lit a fire under me, and we, we started teaching the Constitution all over the country. And and uh, now we've had, I don't know, to about 250,000 people go through the course. We've got about 11,000 Constitution coaches out there that are teaching the class. And, and, and I'll add this in terms of the commands that that fit into what you and I do that that have been ignored for too long. Forsake not the fellowship. And, and, and I think when you bring people together, when we bring people together, and they're able to sit around and talk about what does the Bible say about this, and, and they're able to vent about what's happening in the country, uh, and then talk about solutions, and then get engaged in activity, there is something about that that is so healing in terms of the pain that we're feeling with, with what's happening in the nation, but then inspiring to say, wow, I can do something about this. Like you said, I don't have to just throw things at the TV. I can actually go out there and get engaged. And we've seen that magic over the last couple of years with these these courses as they've exploded. And uh, and I just want to encourage your listeners and get in these classes, the Monday night class and the Tuesday night class, because it's not enough to just go read a book or take a class online by yourself. When you're around other people and you learn this stuff together, boy, that I mean, that iron sharpening iron is powerful. And that's what you're doing. And that's going to ignite, I think, a revolution in freedom across the country. I don't think it. I see it happening all over the nation. So very excited about it. Anyway, that's Patriot Academy. We love doing what we do, and we're just here to equip. We're kind of the ammunition providers, the intellectual ammunition providers. And, and you know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel either. So we love coming alongside you and giving you the ammunition. You've got the troops on the ground. You're training them, and you're putting them out there in the culture to make a difference. So it's a great partnership, and we're looking forward to coming alongside you. Well, what we're seeing, Rick, when we sit and have a Saturday seminar and do our on-ramp to civic engagement seminar at a church, you know, you have 50 people in a room for – you know, seven hours, right? And they're yeah. hearing, we're, I'm teaching them on party politics and advocacy and issues from a biblical perspective and how to be a Christian in the political movements with integrity. And Lathan Watson from our 
friends at First Liberties teaching about religious liberty and not being afraid and getting out there and, um, you know, and then Jason Evans with Time to Revive is teaching about the power of the gospel. You cannot leave a seven-hour seminar like that without being transformed in some way, right? And the fruit of that, yes, it's a big ask, right? It's a big ask to say, guys, go on a Saturday for a seven-hour seminar. Go send your young people to Patriot Academy for the summer for a week. Um, Let them get trained. Or go sign up for a Monday night or Tuesday night class. And, I mean, these videos, Rick, they're intense, but they are awesome. I mean, an hour and a half video where you've got Kirk Cameron, you've got David Barton, you've got Michelle Bachman, you've got Roy McCoy, um, all these guys, yourself, uh, particularly yourself, of course. Um, But... The, I'm, I'm just the dancing chicken, man. I'm just the host. I just bring all those those power players together. <laughs> you're, you're like me. We're like the gatherers, right? Let's find all, right. the, all the pieces and the people that need to be together, right? Yeah, but that's yeah. what these videos do. And what's so beautiful about the way you're, you're orchestrating this is let's do this online or let's do this in a church and sit around and discuss this with real people that share our values and or that ne- and need to get discipled. And let's have that community. And so... We're going to do like a 15-minute intro meeting, and then we're going to play the video, and then we're going to have another 15 minutes or so or talk to people as long as they want with questions so that we can dissect this stuff and get it into our hearts because both you and I know that America can only be changed if our hearts change and we start getting the information that we need and the Word of God ultimately and the truth sets us free, right? Right. So what are some of your favorite moments in this curriculum that have just lit you on fire personally or that you think sticks out? I know you guys are getting testimonies all over America of people being impacted by it. Yeah, I, th- I think, well, something even you, you just said, you know, if you don't know the truth, how's the truth going to set you free? And, and how are you going to be able to identify the lie if you don't know the truth? And so that's a big part of what happens in, in this course. Uh, I, I think the number one thing I hear more than anything is, People leave going, I'm not alone. I, I realize there's other people that get it, that see what's happened. Um, and and then they realize the principles of liberty are not dead. A lot of people have given up, Bunny. I know you run into this all the time. They come up and say, well, if we can't, you know, if the elections are stolen or if this or if that, uh, and they're defeated. And they, and they have the 10 spy depression, you know, where they came back from the promised land, says too hard, giants too big, all that good stuff. And they, and they gave up. And literally that whole generation had to die in the wilderness because of that depression. And so what happens in these in these courses is over the course of that evening, in, in the video, you're getting all this great information. It's being communicated by all these great folks, um, and you're learning things you've never heard before. So there's kind of that that, imp- that, that, it, that that aha moment, if you will, where you go, wow, I didn't know that. But then you get the empowerment of, okay, I can do something with that. And so I think the number one take-home message that most people get is, be of good cheer. All is not lost. The principles are not dead. They work if we work them. They still produce good results when they're used. When you follow the biblical commands and you and you live within God's boundaries, you get still get God's blessings. That 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 system still works, and that our constitutional republic still works. That it's not completely broken. That we've got real problems, no doubt, and we identify those. But I think a lot of people right now they just see the bad results. They see the American culture dying. I mean, we have to be honest; it's dying right before our eyes. But when they step back in this class and they realize what's happening and they say, oh, it's bad leaders doing bad policies with bad principles, that's producing bad results. So instead of being in despair, you look at that and go, oh, I see where the root cause of this is, and I can do something about changing that root cause. I can bring back the principles of liberty and replace the principles of tyranny. So instead of having famine, we have plenty. Instead of having you know, a, a tyranny that, that prevents us from living out our faith, we get religious liberty and we get individual choice and, and parents get to make the decisions. So I think that's the big one is that they just walk away going, the system still works, freedom still works, and I can bring it back to life. And so we try to do that in a really you know entertaining way. That's why we take them into Independence Hall, into David Barton's library, into all these cool places um, so that it's not boring. Um, I hated it's this stuff boring. when I was in high school and college. <laughs> I slept through it. I you know, was always just dead. You know, um, it, it's, it's just like that. I mean, I, I, I love the name of your organization because – Christians engaged makes you immediately think this is action oriented. We're moving towards the goal. We're doing something. It's not you're just sitting in the pew and listening without action, or you're sitting in the in the you know school chair, you know the desk. And well, for me, it was head on the you know uh, drooling on the table as I fell asleep throughout the whole whole thing. So it's not like that. It's very much 
how does this impact your kids, your grandchildren, your family, your job? Um, and I, I think that that's why it works. That's well, and that's why the magic's after the video because that 15 minutes afterwards, people are going to light up and they're going to engage with each other. I mean, that's where the magic is. That was a really long answer to your no, question. No, no, no. I, I didn't I, pick just one thing. Sorry. But this is important because all these grandparents and parents right now are going, how do we reach millennials? How do we reach Gen Xers? Like, they're so burdened, right, for what's happening in our nation yeah. and, and the breakdown, as you said, in education. So how what you're doing, entertaining people and getting them the simple truths is impactful, right? But yeah. we have to take the hard steps and disciple people, and that means spending time with them, right? right? And so when you see a young person go through Patriot Academy or go through biblical citizenship class, um, how does it impact them? Give us some testimonies, Rick, because this is where hope needs to come into people's hearts, that if you give them the truth, it sets them free, right? I'll give you one example that I absolutely love. A gal in Austin, Texas, that um, I, I it was a class I can't I can't remember now. It was probably about a year ago, and um, she posted on her social media a picture with Michelle Obama and said, "This was me a year ago, and where my belief system was after I took biblical citizenship. It radically changed my thinking. I found truth, and I found how to apply that truth, and now a total 180 to our side." And, and fighting for those biblical truths. So I think what, what happens is, I mean, they just haven't been, most, most of these millennials have not been exposed to the truth. I mean, we used to have a media and an education system and everything that, you know, kind of presented both sides, if you will, at least, at least gave you exposure to different views, taught you how to think so that you could, with deductive reasoning, figure out what was right. Not, that doesn't happen anymore. It's all propaganda. It's all, if you don't agree with us, you're evil racist and all that stuff. So um, this is new for them. And, and we have a kind of a formula. I mean, everything we do, we use this formula. I call it E3. It's basically first you entertain, you got to draw them in and where they're entertaining, they're not bored, but then you teach them something they didn't know. So education, they get that aha moment we're talking about. And then the empowerment, I can do something about this. When those three things combine, that creates inspiration. And now they'll act. Now they'll go do something about it. And for these millennials, I think it's the first time sometimes for some of them that they realize I get to be part of something bigger than myself. They're kind of, I mean, I think this next generation is more driven by that than our generation. They, they, they It's not just about, I want to be successful as an individual. They want to be part of a movement. They want to know they're making a difference. Frankly, it's why the whole Black Lives Mafia thing uh, uh, over the last two years happened so quickly. It felt like it was happening quickly with what happened in the streets that with Antifa and everything. They thought, I mean, you had all these white liberals and all these kids that came out of the education system. They believed they were part of a righteous cause. A lot of them, it was, I mean, this was spiritual for them. They really thought, I'm on the right side of history. I'm the MLK of, of this day. If they were just read MLK, they'd realize they're doing the opposite of what MLK stood for and marched with and, and all those things. But they really believed they were part of something special and something good because they hadn't been exposed to the truth. So I think for the millennials, it's very much about giving them truth, letting them see where we really came from as a nation, let them see the biblical foundations of this country, let them see that the biblical principles do produce the best results, and that they get to be the rebels of their day. That's kind of fun, too. I know I was a rebel at that age, and uh, the rebellion today is a rebellion for freedom. So it's kind of cool that they get to be the rebels, but they're actually on the right side um, by being those rebels. That, they, that's kind of what we see with They want to be on mission, too. And, yeah. you know, I got trained and when let me go back and hit something you said when we talk about our side we're not talking about republican versus democrat that's right we're talking about biblical versus unbiblical okay that's right. rick and i both operate 501c3s um we are all about christian worldview and biblical worldview and there is a, a distinct difference we have corrupt politicians and people that want to take liberty away from people in both parties right that's exactly right so just to clarify that um but I got schooled by um, our great Texas Senator, um, Phil Graham, and his disciple, Jeb Henserling, Congressman Jeb Henserling. And one thing I learned in my political education, and I call it my political discipleship, was this. First principles matter. And Jeb, when we had um, staff retreats, he would put first principles on all of our shirts, on everything we were talking about, Right. Because if we understood the first principles and we truly grasp that in his belief system, then we would be able to see the deception, right? right? So we could see, 
you know, earmarks are bad. Why? Because it doesn't line up with first principles. That's right. Dodd-Frank needs to be reformed or get not get rid of because it, you know, it doesn't line up with first principles. So what this is so important is about discipleship is if we get the foundation right, then we can hear all the voices from the right and the left and be able to discern what is truth. Um, and Rick, talk about, so people are not getting that in their local churches. Let's just, yeah. let's hit that for a second. And so what we're offering is an opportunity to get discipled in things that they might not be getting in their local church. And why is that important for individuals to take ownership and find resources like this outside of their local churches if their local churches are not offering it? Yeah, and that and that's you know you just hit on a huge subject, Bunny, and that, and it, not knowing the principles really puts you at a disadvantage for even to be able to to discern right from wrong. And, and and part of what we do with Patriot Academy is when they come through, we teach them an acronym called LIFT: Limited Government, Individual Liberties, Free Enterprise, and Timeless Truths. And virtually every bill that comes through a legislative session is going to you know fit into one of those. It's either going to violate those principles or uphold those principles. Without those first principles, if you don't know that, then again, no plumb line, you can't measure against it. And the church doesn't teach those first principles anymore. The, the church as a whole has shied away from politics and government, acted like it's somehow not addressed in the Bible or that it's not allowed to be addressed from the pulpit. They've bought the American lie of, of separation of church and state and that if you want to you know, be um, good and holy, you stay out of that arena and you only go in. I mean, they, th- all of that has weakened the church by removing the church from the arena that it should be salt and light in. And so what this does is it gives pastors a chance to teach these first principles through this course without them ha- even having to do it on Sunday morning if they don't want to, right? right. But it gives you it gives them a chance to start sowing these seeds within their church and start addressing these things that, frankly, the flock is crying out for. I mean, people are saying, I need to know what the Bible says about this transgender stuff. I need right. to know what the Bible says about you know the, the all uh, the education system or about mandatory vaccines or I mean they need to know how do I have a biblical perspective on these stuff and if the pastor's not teaching that you know it's hard for them so this is almost like a parachurch ministry mm-hmm. from the standpoint of we want to come alongside pastors and churches and say here's this information here's this education here's a rallying point for the people in your church to start getting a biblical perspective on these issues and engaging them in a, in a biblical way um, to influence in this way. So it's, it's really, it's been missing in the church for, mo- and I shouldn't say that with a broad stroke, like I did. No, I mean, but- obviously there's a small percentage of churches that have been great on the, on this stuff. Um, but, but frankly, the church has failed the culture. We haven't been salt and light. We haven't preserved the culture. We haven't brought light into the darkness like we should have. And, and that's why, you know, us getting engaged in the way that we're, we're doing, I think is what saves America because it, it reignites the church, whether it's in the church building Mm-hmm. Or it's in you know a meeting room somewhere, or it's in someone's living room. That's still the church, right? And so if the church becomes again the epicenter of the community, the place that people come together, and in that fellowship they address the needs of the community and the neighborhood, and they go out there and they meet those needs in a biblical way, that solves every problem that we're facing as a as a country right now. It's got to begin at the local level, and it's got to be the church that makes that makes this happen. So you can get biblical citizenship in your church. Um, You can present it to your pastor and say, this might be an option for our church for uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, et cetera, or an online class or something. Or you can take it with us with Christians Engage and then be a coach, right? You can do a lot of things. Um, So you can- Well, and, and the ideal thing is that they would do it with you first and experience that and then just make this a tool in their bucket, right? right? So as they, through Christians Engage, get their church involved, they're just able to bring this along with them and say, here's a tool that we can bring uh, to the church. So I, I think it'd be great if they do the class with you first on Tuesday nights, because most people are afraid to go jump out there and do it on their own initially anyway. And that way they can experience it. They can learn some of the material. Um, but but I do want to put everybody at ease and say to host this class or to do this in your living room or your church or whatever, you don't have to know anything. Yep. I mean, this is not something where you have to be an expert. Let the videos do the teaching. All you do is Put out the coffee and cake and lead the discussion. And when I say lead the discussion, that doesn't mean lead with answers. That means just say, hey, what'd y'all think? What'd you learn? How'd you do? You know, that's how you lead the discussion. And the rest will, will take care of itself. And we all know that when we're teaching something or being exposed, having to put become a mediator or a role in that way, that we are learning much more than we that's would right. ever learn before. So anyway, yeah. we're excited about this. We're excited about doing these once a quarter, Rick. And we're really thankful for y'all developing it. 
Um, we've all got our place, and this is so important that we learn the Constitution, our founding principles, the ideas of our founding fathers, and how the Bible aligns with that. So we're really thankful for that. Um, you can find the class guides at christiansengage.org backslash classes. Um, that will be constantly scrolling. So, you know, you could jump in at any time. Uh, even though it's an eight-week class, if you want to get in the second week, fine. Sign up. Um, right. And then you can take it again with us or, or finish up the other video later. But there's a lot of ways you can interact with us. And then how do they find you if their kids want to come to Patriot Academy or do anything else? Rick. Yeah, PatriotAcademy.com. Uh, that's where you can go for the youth leadership program. We do that here in Texas. We do it the first week of August. We do it in other states all throughout the summer. And so you can get those dates and, and, and uh, join us there. If you want to come to our constitutional defense course where we teach handgun training during the day and constitution at night, that's a really fun fellowship thing as well. And also just important for us to be able to defend our, our families. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, it's a great way to, to just engage with other patriots around the country. So PatriotAcademy.com is a place to go. Really looking forward to locking shields with you, Bunny. This is going to be fun. Well, it's exciting. Now, I haven't done this before, but I feel like I'm supposed to pray for you on camera. And Go pray for, for Patriot yes. Academy. So, Lord, we just thank you for Patriot Academy, for Rick and Kara Green, their family, God, everything that they put their hands to touch, God. We thank you, Lord, for that you're raising up voices, you're raising up pioneers, and that Patriot Academy is part of that army to uh, engage the body of Christ, to awaken the body of Christ in this hour, and to uh, educate and disciple in the things that make us um, strong believers in this generation, in this nation, in this moment. God, Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for their friendship. And Lord, we lock arms with them, God, to see your glory fill the earth in this world. And Lord, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome, brother. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Okay. God bless.